Hello everyone and welcome. In this video sponsored by Hankook, we are talking summer tires and more specifically, we're looking at electric summer tires like this Ion Evo, which may feel like a strange ask since summer tires are all about performance while electric car tires really need to focus on rolling resistance to maximize range. Now personally, I am of the belief that if you live in a climate where you can run summer tires, basically dry and wet conditions above about 40 or so degrees Fahrenheit, you absolutely should. Summer tires offer the most grip in these conditions, which isn't just a performance benefit, it's also a safety benefit. They offer the most precise steering feel, and they're often quiet tires. So personally, as a risk-averse engineer is designed to think, a summer tire gives you the biggest performance envelope, giving you the greatest buffer in terms of avoiding incidents, and they simply feel the best to drive. So for this video, I want to focus on a few key questions surrounding EV summer tires. First, what are some of the defining characteristics of a summer tire? Second, how do you balance grip and rolling resistance? And third, what's so special about this tire right here? Starting from the beginning, what makes a summer tire? Well, we need to discuss compound, tread design, and the carcass. From a compound standpoint, summer tires generally have the hardest, stiffest compound in comparison to all season or winter tires. Why? Well, these are your performance-oriented tires. They're designed for maximum grip and for maximum speeds. And at high speeds, you want a stiff tire compound so that you have good stability. This also means you'll have a more responsive tire. Since you don't have as much play with the compound, it will act very direct. So what does hardness actually mean? Well, for tires, this can be expressed using something called the Shore A hardness scale. Essentially, this is a dimensionless measurement from zero to 100, with zero meaning it has very little resistance to indentation, in other words, it's very soft, and 100 meaning it has very high resistance to indentation, in other words, very hard. So for example, the soft, never worked a day in their life palms of my hands return a zero, basically no resistance towards pushing in the durometer needle. Compare that to the hard plastic case this tool came in, basically a 100, so for rigid plastics like this, you'd want to use a different scale to differentiate between them. Hankook says EV tires will generally fall somewhere between 68 and 73 on this scale. Now, because I have way too many sets of tires in my basement, I went around testing different compounds with this budget tester. While sitting at about 65 degrees Fahrenheit, my winter tires measured a 60 easily the softest of the bunch, the all seasons were at about 70, and a set of summer tires were at 75. So significant difference between the different compounds. Okay, so significantly harder, but summer tires also tend to have a very different tread pattern. The goal here is the absolute best grip possible in both dry and wet conditions, and generally speaking, operating at higher ambient temperatures. A big difference is a shallower tread depth. Of course, you need to balance this with how long you want the tire to last, but that lower tread depth means you have a more responsive tire because you have less tread movement. Higher tread depths can help with the forces involved driving on things like snow, but that's obviously not the priority here. Summer tires also tend to have the widest rain grooves, significantly wider than all season tires and especially winter tires. Part of this is because you have a shallower tread depth, so you need a wider area to have the same drainage capacity. But also, a summer tire is designed for the absolute best traction in the rain. Yes, even better than an all-season tire, assuming that water falling from the sky is actually rain and not snow. For snow tires, large main grooves tend to be disadvantageous to snow traction, so snow tires tend to have a much smaller main groove or even eliminate it altogether. You'll also notice the tread has far fewer distinct features. All of these biting edges are helpful for snow traction, but with a summer tire, response is the priority, and the lack of sipes means more rigid tread blocks, with better traction in dry conditions. You might be surprised to learn that from a design standpoint, summer tires tend to be amongst the quietest tires. There's a few reasons for this. A lot of it comes down to the land to sea ratio, where you have tread and where you don't, plus the lower tread depth, which significantly reduces the air pumping effect through the grooves as the tire rotates. And there aren't large lateral grooves on the outer tread blocks for that noise to escape outside the tire. Finally, we get to the tire's construction, and an important feature I want to focus on are the internal belts. On the side of a tire, you can see its speed rating, this W here, which indicates it's rated for 168 miles per hour or 270 kilometers per hour, which is great because that is faster than the top speed of my car. 
But I've run winter tires at a lower rating, an H grade, meaning 210 kilometers per hour or about 130 miles per hour, probably fast enough for snow driving. So let's just compare the maximum g-forces the outside of a tire could experience with an H versus a W speed rated tire. Centripetal acceleration is equal to velocity squared over radius. So the outside of an H rated tire in this size traveling at 130 miles per hour would be experiencing over 1000 g's. The outside of a W rated tire of the same size traveling at 168 miles per hour would be experiencing over 1700 g's, about 700 g's more. That is a massive difference. So one of the things Hankook does with the Ion Evo is they use an Aramid hybrid reinforcement belt, which helps reduce the amount that that tire stretches from the massive g-forces. And they actually provide some concrete numbers here, which is really cool. Hankook says with a 255 over 35 ZR18 tire traveling at 180 kilometers per hour, the use of an Aramid belt reduces the diameter growth from 1.4 millimeters down to just 1.1 millimeters. So that's actually a significant percentage difference in growth based on the construction of the tire. Moving on to our second big question, obviously we want good performance since this is a summer tire, but since it's being used on an EV, we also want low rolling resistance in order to improve range. So how do you balance grip and rolling resistance? First, it's important to explain that the relationship between rolling resistance and grip is complicated. So for example, if you have a winter tire and a summer tire, on dry roads, the summer tire is generally going to have both better grip and better rolling resistance. So you can't simply say, oh, it's an eco tire, it has low rolling resistance, therefore it doesn't have grip. But what about a more apples to apples comparison? So for example, Hankook supplies the tires used in Formula E. As it's a racing series and a racing tire, of course, grip is the most important factor. But rolling resistance also matters, as these are electric cars intentionally starting the race with limited energy. So in the context of designing a racing tire, when you're designing a tire for a fairly specific scenario, improving rolling resistance will generally come with sacrificing grip. Okay, so why are they connected? Well, the occurrence of hysteresis affects both grip and rolling resistance. So rubber is a viscoelastic material. It distorts its shape, digging into the surface of the road, and then as the tire continues to rotate, that material reverts back to its original shape. But this is not immediate, there is a delay, and this mechanism is called hysteresis. You want this deformation into the road and then this delay as it returns to its original shape as it provides grip. This hysteresis is caused by friction within the compound, and the higher the number of substances within the compound that can create a large amount of friction, the higher the hysteresis, giving you a grip advantage. But of course, a lot of friction means a lot of heat generated, and that component is your rolling resistance, or the energy lost producing that grip. A bit oversimplified, but reinforcing fillers like silica and carbon black can increase friction, improving grip. Substances like sulfur create strong bonds amongst the rubber, which reduces the amount of deformation you have, thus reducing grip, but improving rolling resistance. But there are other ways you can reduce rolling resistance without negatively impacting grip. For example, summer tires have shallower tread depths. This means you have less overall material deforming, so you have less overall heat generated. Structural lightning has the same effect. You also want to make sure when creating the tire that the compound is evenly cured. And ensuring that you have a really even pressure distribution on the contact patch reduces rolling resistance while improving grip. In addition, sidewalls play a big role. So it might be counterintuitive, but a softer sidewall can actually reduce rolling resistance. That's because most of the rolling resistance comes from the tread. So by using a flexible sidewall, you can reduce the shoulder deformation of the tread, reducing your overall heat generation. Now it's worth mentioning, these particular tires have a bit stiffer sidewalls versus your average tires since EVs are heavy. So this helps provide better stability and better steering feel. But all of this is really just to say, yes, there is a correlation between grip and rolling resistance, but it's not so simple as to just say if one goes up, the other goes down. And finally, what's so special about this tire? And I'll be honest, when I read that it has a AAA European tire label, I thought, so what? How difficult could it be? I bet plenty of tires achieve this. Until I actually researched what these labels mean. So the three categories are rolling resistance, wet grip, and tire noise. 
Pick any category and less than 10% of tires on the market have an A rating in that individual category. Okay, now how many have an A in all three categories? As of recording this video, of the 164,453 tire options and sizes currently sold, just 208 tires have a triple A rating. That's slightly more than one-tenth of one percent of tires. And it just so happens, Hankook has more tire options with a AAA rating than any other brand. Of course, much of this because of their efforts towards creating an EV tire lineup. Okay, so let's look at these individual ratings and see what they mean. Starting with rolling resistance, this is the easiest label to understand because the letter rating simply correlates with the tire's coefficient of rolling resistance. The lower the coefficient of rolling resistance, the better the letter grade, based on the scale shown on screen. And as I demonstrated in my previous video on electric car tires, this can be a very meaningful difference in range. For example, if you were to have an A rated tire with a coefficient of rolling resistance at 0.005 versus a D rated tire at 0.01, and again, more tires fall under the D rating than any other letter rating, then you could actually see a 30 mile difference in range. 30 miles, just based on what tire you pick. That is extraordinary. So then naturally you might think, okay, well that rolling resistance is at the expense of grip. And certainly there are times when this is true, yet this achieved an A rating in wet grip, which only about 9% of the listed tires achieved. Now, the wet rating isn't quite as straightforward to understand as rolling resistance. You still have letter grades A through E, but the actual rating is a ratio of the tested tire versus a benchmark tire. The difference between letter grades is significant though. For example, an A rated tire could have over 40% more grip versus a D rated tire in wet conditions. That is a massive difference. And finally, we have the noise rating, with less than 9% of the listed tires getting an A rating. For noise, you just have an A, B, or C rating. Based on the type of tire used, there's an assigned decibel limit. So for example, a narrower tire has a lower decibel target than a wider tire. A summer tire has a lower decibel target than a winter tire. So for the specific tire you're testing, if you exceed the decibel target, you get a C rating. If you're within three decibels below the target, you get a B rating. And if you're more than three decibels quieter than the target, you get an A rating. So these ratings can be useful regardless of what tire you're looking into purchasing. You can look at these ratings and reference them to see how different tires stack up. And just to provide some hard numbers from Hankook's internal testing, they claim with these Ion Summer tires versus a regular tire, you can get up to 18% noise reduction, 15% longer tread life, 6% more range, and 10% improved driving stability. So if you haven't yet, I'd highly recommend checking out my video on electric car tires and discussing why they're needed and how they differ from regular tires. A huge thank you to Hankook for sponsoring this video and thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.